Meanwhile, back at the ranch, part two. Watching the political show in America reminds me of those old silent westerns. We need signs to tell us when the scene changes, because it all looks the same from my perspective out here in the real world. Whichever party is in charge, its supporters and detractors focus on the good or bad, and each acts like those on the other side embody evil. Been there, done that, getting off that merry-go-round. Which is why I'm more interested in looking at the scene shift in the book of 1 Kings, which has enough parallels to current events to give us some perspective. Sorting out and following the line of divided kings in Judah and Israel is simply not simple. For about 200 years, the record jumps back and forth between the two nations as the various kings come and go. Sometimes they fought each other and sometimes they formed alliances. But though they were always distinct, it is difficult for us to keep them separate in our minds. For example, we recently looked at Asa, the great-great-grandson of David, who came to the throne 60 years after David's death and 20 years after the division into the north and south. Here's why it's so difficult to follow. Asa was the third king to rise to the throne in the south, Judah, during the reign of just one king, Jeroboam, in the north, Israel. But that script was about to flip. During Asa's 40 years as king in Judah, from 910 BC to 870 BC, eight different kings ruled in Israel. Two years after Asa came to the throne, Jeroboam died. His son Nadab lasted only two years before being murdered by a usurper named Basha, who lasted 24 years. His son Elah lasted two years before being killed by Zimri, who only lasted seven days before being replaced by Omri. For a while, this was the era of two kings because a man named Tibni claimed the throne as well. Omri eventually won out, and in the 38th year of Asa's rule in Judah, turned things over to his son, Ahab. Three distinct patterns show up in these events. First, each king of Israel followed in the sin of Jeroboam, 1 Kings 15, verse 34. The second was, strong kings were often followed by weak sons. Jeroboam's son Nadab was killed by a usurper after just two years on the throne. Basha's son Elah only lasted two years before he was murdered by Zimri. Ahab, the son of Omri, was the only exception. The third pattern that emerged was how God's judgment prevailed. God declared judgment on the houses of Jeroboam, 1 Kings 15, 29, and Basha, 1 Kings 16, 12, because of their sin, and that judgment came to pass as declared. As I grow older, I become less and less concerned about how we see similar patterns in the political world. All of us who get wound up in what's happening to America, whether we see it from the right or left, yeah, I'm talking to all of you, need to let it go and become more and more concerned about how it is unfolding among the Lord's people. As churches age, they become more and more concerned about maintaining their place in society and adopt more and more of the political tactics of power and control. It shouldn't surprise or shock us. But knowing it is a path to failure and God's judgment makes it a pattern that should get our attention wherever we are. Thank you for watching Morning Minutes in the Bible. Until next time, this is James McClendon hoping you have a great day.